Hey there guys, welcome back for another Mortal Realms magazine review. This week, taking a look at issue 45 of the Mortal Realms magazine. So we're uh, definitely over halfway there now. So with this issue, just a couple of paints this time round. We got the uh, the Wazducker Red and the Wild Rider Red. Um, so yeah, not a huge saving. Um, I think if you go by Games Workshop price, I will put this obviously towards the end of the video. Uh, these are 350 each. So you're looking at about seven pounds. So you're obviously not not a saving when it comes to the uh, the magazine itself being eight pounds. But still, you know, knock say three quid off for the value of the magazine. Um, should it just be a magazine on its own and then the paints, you know, you're still saving money. You're getting a magazine and two paints for eight quid. You can't really complain, especially when we get bumper issues like that of issue 43. Anyway, that's the uh, the paints. And with this one, we also get two... Oh, no. I've got duplicates. <laughs> so I've got two forces of destruction. We will uh, get rid of one. So this is, again, another fold out here focusing on the forces of destruction side of the mortal realms so we got the auric war clans and this thing looks beastly look at that i do love large models like this i, I just think they're so impressive um i do prefer large scale things um things like this you know large squigs and war bosses and stuff like that they just to me they're they're modeling you know they make great display pieces but that is pretty impressive so we've got the auric war clans the gloom spike gits and again look at this piece that's awesome um not only a good model for uh, gaming with but definitely something that you can make um you know big display pieces out of so yeah and on the back we've got the sons of payamat so giants um again these were introduced i think last year um so new models for us and they're in the uh featured in the magazine so obviously the magazines must know ahead of time um what models are coming out obviously when they're made up so that they've got photos for them shame we can't get a sneak preview of um later issues of the uh, Imperium magazine that is supposed to be coming out and uh, see ahead of time what models we could be getting that aren't announced yet but uh, there we go and then again look at this so Ogre Moor Tribes or sorry Ogre, Ogre Moor Tribes but they're Ogres so yeah that's the uh, the fold out that comes with this issue. Then we are looking at, oh, we get some new terrain rules as well as how to paint red highlights and obviously the two paints. So going in this, we got focusing on order. We've got the Caradron Overlords, AKA, AKA Dwarves with really cool futuristic looking guns. Um, probably not ones to be messed with. So the Caradron Overlords are technologically advanced skyfaring Dwardin dwarves who prize profit above all else. They sail the clouds in metal clad vessels armed to the teeth with guns and bombs. Definitely a, uh, a deadly bunch. I mean, you know, how can a crossbow compete with a laser rifle from the future by the looks of that? So we got obviously a little bit on their sky ports, uh, their trade in the city, There's some notable characters here. And then we've got the realms, the Everspring Swathe Part 2. So in, even during the Age of Myth, Giran was not immune to conflict. Nagash sought to expand his sphere of influence to the Jade Kingdom. Kurnoth's wild hunt pursued their prey, and the earth-shaking strides of god-beasts echoed through the trees. 
an unholy alliance. Even in the age of myth, the relationship between Nagash and Alariel was strained. To prevent conflict between their respective faction, factions, Alariel gifted Nagash the frozen kingdom of Decrep Decrepita. This led to a truce between the two gods, and for a time, peace reigned. Nagash, however, remained unsatisfied with the bargain. He soon began to plot against the Ever Queen. Their agreement would not hold for long. Bit of a greedy git, isn't he? Wants everything. So, a little bit on uh, the coming of Bayamat. So, born from the vomit of a god beast, the Gargants, known as the Sons of Bayamat, are a near unstoppable destructive force. They stalk the mortal realms in groups, smashing down the fortresses of mortals and devouring anyone unfortunate enough to be caught in the path of their destructive rampages. Okay, so the realms, part two. Dominion of oh sorry the realms the dominion of Sigma part two so we've got a couple of realms ones here so Sigmoite mausoleums were once sanctified ground most have long since crumbled to dust and many of those remain remain oh many of those that remain are infested with ghosts and ghouls so obviously we've had a load of this some nice looking terrain in the background probably a little bit more custom built you can see you've got some of the curved wall here definitely parts of the uh, the ruins we've got the two column statues so yeah definitely custom built terrain using some uh, kits which is definitely a cool idea and very inspirational Okay, so we've got a little bit on Tombs of Heroes, The Curse of Undeath, and The Gaze of Nagash. And we've got Skies of... The Skies of Fire, so obviously this is going back to the Caradon Overlords. So to the Caradon Overlords, there is no resource more precious than Ether Gold. Should the supply be threatened, they will fight to secure it. That's a nice piece of artwork there. And obviously, what have we got here? Oh, a beast of corn. So the Caradon Sky Fleets are made up of Arcanaut class airships. They are all clad in heavy metal plate and carry a complement of Arcanaut crew and warriors. Frigates make up the majority of the fleets, while larger ironclads serve as flagships. And obviously, it sounds like we've got a little bit of a story here, just um, eyeballing this. So, a little bit of a story to go with that. All right, how to paint red highlights. Um, guys, it's pretty much the same as you do any highlights. Thin the paint slightly. Get some on your bristles. And very carefully run along the edge. But, uh, yeah, there we go, obviously painting tutorials need to carry on and uh, yeah sorry I'm getting lost in myself here so terrain we've got ah, some core rules so again this will go into our rule section and this is some more terrain now oh there goes something back there right so we've got yeah rules on terrain uh, scenery table, alright, so you can determine whether it's damned or arcane, inspiring or anything like that. And then we got, obviously, the special rules for the type of terrain that you're using. So garrisons or deadly terrain. Then we've got a war scroll for our Sigmarite mausoleum. Um... Again, this looks like it works. So a Sigmarite Mausoleum is a terrain feature that consists of three to six crypt models, one to two statue models, one to two gate models, and seven to 14 wall sections. So in order for it to be a mausoleum, you will need at least three crypts, one statue, one gate, and seven walls. 
Now, obviously, as part of the magazine, we got an entire half of the boxed mausoleum kit. So we got the three, the one, the one, and the seven. And uh, if you were like many others and bought a couple of issues or more, then obviously you've got enough to make up an entire mausoleum. Or if you've bought the box set, then you've got the entire mausoleum there. So you can make a large one or two smaller ones or more if you were um, definitely quick on the draw and grabbed a few copies of each of those issues. There we have some layout for it. Do not like the look of that one. And again, you can decide with your opponent whether or not you want these touching like this. You know, you could have spread it out a little bit more and say this is the mausoleum. Just obviously, I wouldn't go more than two inches of gap between anything um, as it will look too separated. I know the rules say one inch, but personally, if your opponent allows it and is happy with it, then uh, allow two inches max between pieces. Um, and yeah, just allows for a little bit more space, some space for troops to move through and things like that. So, holding the line. So this is the battle. And for this, we will be using the single mausoleum that we've got for this issue. Oh, sorry, not for this issue, from this magazine. So one half of a full mausoleum box set. Um, a Knight of Shrouds on the Ethereal Steed, four Grimgast Reapers, ten Chain Rasp, three Spirit Hosts, Xandria Azure Bolt, three Evocators, and five Sequitors. So obviously this is in introducing um, the crypt and uh, mausoleum layouts. So obviously a garrison is what you would be using for it. It would be counting as a garrison and possibly deadly terrain too. Or do we roll on here? So yeah, you could count it as deadly terrain or roll on here and obviously it would be a garrison. Then we've got some tokens here. So scenery table tokens to make it easy to remember what they are. So if it's down, you just put one of these tokens down next to it or in the center somewhere. And uh, yeah, so obviously as usual, photocopy this page, stick it down to some card and cut them out. Um, but I know some collectors of the magazine as well as other places are doing 3D printed versions of these. So chances are you can now find them online um, some 3D printed custom uh, tokens for Mortal Realms um, games for Age of Sigma. So if you're looking for something a little bit more um, indestructible, <laughs> um, you know, a little bit better than just some paper cut out, then check those out. Obviously prices are going to vary depending on where you get them from, as well as quality. But yeah, we'll definitely beat the paper stuff if you are more into Age of Sigma. Um, me personally, I'll stick with the paper ones. As I've said before, I don't game too much with um, Age of Sigma. This is just more collection because I like painting. Um, whereas 40k is what I prefer, is what I've collected throughout the years for the most part. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to the Imperium magazine that will be coming out um, so that's the end of this issue guys in the next upcoming issues issue 46 we've got a new piece of terrain this is the fallen sigma statue so that will be next week's video and as i mentioned last week if you left a comment on what you wanted to see this head painted as stone marble or brass or bronze um, then obviously Today is when I will be painting this. Um, so as you're seeing this video over this weekend is when I'll be painting this up. Ready for Monday based on what you guys left in the comments. 
Then issue 47, we get some fast riders. No, no far striders. Get it right. So far striders. Uh, three of these. I think we actually end up with five of them by the end of the magazine. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, so there we go. So three far striders in the next issue. So some definitely new models to paint rather than repeating old models. And obviously it'll be this guy that I'll paint up. The, uh, the leader guy, he's got some of the extra bits plus the bird. So we can get some more color in there. I think obviously because I'll be doing him in Celestial Vindicator's color, which is very similar to this, we may go for different colors on this. Something maybe more um, reds and yellows, giving more of a parrot type look. Or I can go dark browns and give him more of a hawk. Um, yeah, maybe more of a hawk type look. Anyway, that's the end of this issue, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're enjoying the content that I'm putting up on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And now that I have a Patreon up and running and that I am trying my best to keep that up to date, um, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, then go and check that out. I have two tiers on there. The basic tier will allow you the free uh, or the cheap content, um, which is um, painting guides and um, you know the access to certain things on there. The slightly higher up one will give you access to the uh, the painting video on the character focus series um, featuring the Horus Heresy characters. Uh, but I may expand that into Mortal Realms, and also you'll be able to vote there on uh, upcoming character focus models so the following month's models and on top of that the model that I'm currently doing as I'm making this uh, review is this guy Horus so again another little preview there of uh, Horus himself uh, sorry not Horus Abaddon so from the Horus Heresy from Forge World there's Abaddon not quite finished yet uh, he's at about four and a half hours so far at this point but uh, his videos will be up on there they'll be focusing on each section full videos um, every week until he is completed um, over on patreon and then here on YouTube you will get an edited video um, so more of a sped up similar to what I do for my painting videos here anyway um, a month after he has already been on patreon so Obviously, those Patreon subscribers get a little bit of an advance um, as a thanks for supporting the channel. So, yeah, go check that out. And uh, until next, next time, guys, take it easy. Keep painting those minis.